All right, so here's the uh, Diana 350N tech scoped. I put out a couple of videos already, you know, my unboxing video, and then uh, just a video of me shooting groups at, at uh, 11 yards with the iron sights. And uh, finally got around to it putting on a Hulk uh, Vantage scope. It's the uh, 4 by 16 scope uh, with a 44 millimeter objective lens. Okay, it has this is the one with the side focus. You can uh, adjust this parallel down to 15 yards. You can see that. Um, so let's just take a quick uh, run rundown of the of the Antec before I actually do the uh, the grouping. So if you look at the back, it's got the ventilated rubber cheek piece, which is non-adjustable, but it, it's, it's on there pretty good. You got the nice uh, beach stock with the with the raised uh, cheek cheek piece here, which is very comfortable. Again, you have the stippling, which I mentioned before, at the pistol and the fore and the foregrip, which is very nice. Um, this. The Antec, when you compare it to the uh, the 350 Antec, when you compare it to the to the regular spring uh, RWS 350, it's lengthwise. I believe that this model is half an inch longer because on the specs it comes in at 48 and a half uh, inches long. But on the weight, when you compare the weight to the uh, 350 spring barrel version it comes in a pound lighter a pound to a pound and a half lighter so we're talking about you know without the scope on the seven pounds for a magnum spring which is pretty good now yet there is really um, there's pros and cons with it being light you know, the first thing is that, yeah, it comes in at six and a half, under seven pounds and it's very light. And if you're going to carry it around, it's okay. But then the other thing is, um, it's very hole sensitive because it's so light. So you really have to get your, your hold and you really have to concentrate on taking your shots. Because when you're, you know, when you're holding it, let's say, uh, you really have to keep it steady. When you have a heavy springer, the weight actually keeps the movement down from the barrel. So, that's the only thing you have to worry about, you know, with a light, with a light um, brake barrel. But what's most important is that even though it's light, and this is a Magnum Springer, even though it doesn't have a spring, it has a, a gas spring, <clears throat> that there is shock. Uh, you know, you have the, the shot cycle, and then you have the shock that comes with it. But with this particular Entech model, and, and also the 340, the shooter doesn't feel that vibration. Um, Whatever Diana has done with the, the, the stock, it, it really absorbs the shock where the shooter doesn't feel it. Now, the thing with this particular rifle is that there are mounting screws that I'm going to show you. There's two underneath, one, two, and then you have uh, two on the side, one here 
and then one there. So these do become loose after taking some shots. And the best thing to do is to get one of these. Uh, I got this screwdriver. It's a four by. It's a four by. Uh, you know, four into one screwdriver. I picked it up in Sears, and it has the, you know, the Phillips head and the flat head. But for this rifle, all you're going to need is the fat Phillips and the skinny Phillips. So there are three screws where you have to, you know, make sure that you got to keep the tension on because they are going to back out on you. So that you got to use the two fat, two fat screws in the front, and then on the bottom you have one fat screw underneath. Which is on this side and then you have here the skinny head and just make sure that that's tight uh, when you do tighten it make sure you don't over tighten it because you're going to strip the screws and then you're going to be screwed basically uh, another important thing is that if you're using iron sights you know that you don't have the scope these this rear adjustment is also held by two Phillips screws Right? And they're going to be the small ones, the small Phillip head. And these will back out on you very easily. So when I was uh, did my second video, I wasn't really paying attention to these two little screws. And this became very, very loose, which probably negatively affected my group shots. So, um, so now anyway, that's the overview of the rifle. If uh, I think I showed you on the bottom, you have the Diana mark under the pistol grip, and then under the forearm, you have the Antec engraving, which is a very nice touch. Okay, so for all my, I think I've, you know, I've said this on all my other videos, when at all possible, every air gun, every air rifle that I get, I always get a one piece mount. And this mount is the Hawk mount. And you can get this at for about $20, which is a bargain. Um, this is the uh, one inch mount with the high rings. And it's got four mountain, four foundation screws on the top, on the bottom, and then four on each ring. Again, 20 bucks, you can get fancier mounts. You're gonna pay, you know, you can pay up to 40, 50 dollars for the mount. But I've have I have plenty of these mounts on my on my air guns. And they've never failed me. Not one. So if you can get away with this and you can use this. You're just going to have to have a good uh, scope, especially with the Entex. And you'll know once you mount your scope, you'll know within the first five shots if, you're, if your scope is going to hold, otherwise the reticle is going to spin out on you. So, so far this is holding. Uh, I've had, I took maybe uh, 100 shots with this, 100 pellet shots, and so far it's holding. So uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if it, if it continues to hold, and if it does, then... 20 bucks for the for the mount was a bargain okay <coughs> so so now that we got that out of the way uh, I'm gonna go shoot some more uh, groups at 11 yards with the scope and hopefully the uh, groupings will be a lot better than the, the previous groups that I took without the scope so uh, Okay. Okay. Here are my results with the uh, 350 Antec with the Hawk Optics uh, Vantage Side Focus Scope mounted, and here are the results. I use four different types of pellets, and then here are my groups. So. 
first I started with the JSB Jumbo's 1589 grain and if you can see I did a pretty good group I got three right next to each other and then two right on top of each other so um, I gave it a I knew I could do better so I gave it a second shot second round and then I got this I got basically four right next to each other and then one below which was my fault so the JSB Jumbos 1589 are definitely uh, pellet that I'm going to keep on using in the Entec in the 350. So then I tried the H and Barracuda match 21 grains and they were just all over the place so I'll remove those those pellets from uh, from this rifle then I went back to my favorite H&N Barracuda Hunters and I got a pretty decent group there but I know I could do a little bit better and then that's the second round that I did and it looks like this bottom one just got away from me but basically that's four in the same hole and then I had a, a tin of Crossman Premier hollow points with me I tried those out just for the heck of it and then guess what I got I think they were the best pellet and that's five basically right in top of each other so go figure that that was the surprise alright so the I'm still getting you know used to the hold it's very like I said it's it's very sensitive uh, the barrel the, the it's the rifle does its job so it's up to the shooter to keep it steady and you know I'm getting a little bit better but the rifle I, I can report that it is anyway in this short range with these pellets with these three pellets uh, the hollow points for me CHPs the Barracuda Hunters are good and the exact jumbos are good so these are the three pellets I keep on using and just want to report that and then maybe uh, I can come out with another video stretching it out a little bit and uh, I'll definitely be getting back with those results. Thanks.